She won a major fashion award when she was just 22. Won a big fashion award when she was just 22. Our family is very proud of her. Gabriela and I now have very different lives. Earlier, our life was very similar, no? When, I mean, when they went to school, their life was very similar. They got, they got ready, they went to the same school, but now their lives are very different. Now, Gabriela and I have very different lives. We have very different lives. Number 10. But we don't meet very often. Our lives are very different. So, we don't meet very often. No. Because their lives are very different, guys. They don't meet very often. Gabriela and I now have very different lives. So, we don't meet very often. Number 11. However, we still stay in However, touch. We However, we stay in touch. However, we still stay in touch. Still stay in touch. Stay in touch. Stay in touch. We still stay in touch by email and texting. It's not that they are completely out of touch with each other. They are in touch with each other, but only by email and texting. They don't meet each other very often because they have very different lives. One is very busy and successful, right? And the other one is trying to build her, his life. He's still a student doing law. One day he will be successful too, right? When he finishes his law degree and starts his practice, if he is good at his work, he will become famous too. And he will become successful too. We don't meet very often, number 11. However, we still stay in touch by email and texting. She is in Milan this week for a fashion show. She is in Milan this week for a fashion show. Why is, why is she in Milan? For a fashion show. Where is she right now? She is, Mil she is in Milan. Where is she right now? She is in, she Milan. Is in Milan. Milan. Milan is a place. Where is it? In Italy. Milan is in Italy. She's in Milan this week for a fashion show. I love hearing about her life. I love hearing about her life. life. Because, because it is very exciting. Because it is very exciting. I love hearing about her life. I love hearing about her life. Do you have any relatives? You love hearing about their life? No? About your uncle who lives in UAE? You don't enjoy listening to uh, stories about his life? What happens there? No. Mm -hmm. You can tell me. You don't have to be shy. It's, it's okay if it is a little funny. You, you won't be scolded for this. You can express yourself. You don't talk to him much. Uh, you only talk to your one uncle, I think, the Shad uncle. Uh, he's friendly. And the other one is not so friendly. You're a small child. He's all grown up, right? So there isn't much to talk about. Only yes, mamu, no mamu, right? Yeah, I understand. Children, normally, what will they talk about? They, you're, not, you're not the same age. So you don't talk about the same things. Your interests are different. His interests are different. So he will only ask, how are you doing your studies? Are you studying well? That's all, right? Do you have cousins of your age? You are good friends with them? Your uncle said one more person was going to join the class from your home, I think. Who was that person? Brother, sister, your elder cousin. 
Yeah, cousin, cousin, sorry, my my bad. You are you have cousins here, yes. Okay. Hmm. So when you interact more, when you revise more, it becomes a natural process to improve. You know, for some people, learning English like is like a dream. But I believe that don't think of it as a dream. Just take it easy. Do what I ask you to do. Rev do your homework, revise your lessons, talk in the class, and slowly and slowly you will see your English is getting better. And all those other classes where you would read a lot of rules and all, they cannot make you fluent. No matter, I have a student, she's so good at all the grammar, very good. When she writes English, she writes beautifully, but she can't speak very well. Why that? She never had the opportunity to interact in English. Her conversation was always in Hindi. So when I talk to you guys, just respond to me. And I keep it natural in the class so that when you watch the recording, you enjoy that natural conversation as well. So pay full attention, 100% attention when I'm talking to you. When somebody talks to you, your friends or your uncle, your auntie, don't you listen to them fully in that moment. So be with me fully. And that's all. Now, I'm going to open the rooms for you guys for a couple of minutes. I want you to read this text, my cousin Gabriela, to your partner slowly. You will read this text to your partner. Okay, everyone? What will you do? You will read the text to your partner. Yeah, the same text. You will read this text like this. My cousin Gabriela is only 24 years old and she is already a very successful dress designer. So you will read the text to your partner and your partner will listen. Okay, and then when your partner reads, you listen. Okay, everyone? Fine, I'm opening the rooms for you. Do your best, everyone. Do your best. Thanks. Go ahead. Slowly, slowly. That's important. Don't read fast. Try to understand what you're reading. Kashif join Kashif. Adib, Adib, Kashif, for quickly. Yeah. Adib, Adib, come on, Adib. Adib, beta. Shall I close the room? Sir, sorry, who made a network of me, sir? In English, beta. Sorry, sir. My network Sorry. was bad. Okay. Okay. Okay, everyone. Homework for tomorrow is you need to write a similar text. You need to write a similar text about someone you know who is successful. Like my successful cousin Gabriela, you will write my successful mama G. Sir. Anyone who is successful and I, you know them. Hello. Yes. When right. when and where do see you you see her? Okay. It means when do you meet them and where do you meet them? <laughs> see means meet with us. See means meet. Okay. Where do you meet them? Where when do you meet them? Okay. Okay, everyone, exercise two is your homework for tomorrow. Use it, the notes here and write a text like exercise three. Write about a successful person that you know. Use your notes. So your title will be My Successful Cousin XYZ, My Successful Uncle ABC, My Successful Aunt PQR. Understand? 
my successful uh, husband X Y Z, my successful wife A B C. So this will be your topic. Someone who you know who is successful. Okay. Any problems, anyone? And try to write the same way a text. Use linking words, conjunctions. Conjunctions are also called linking words because they link things together. So we call them linking words. Conjunctions are called linking words because they link together. That's why. Okay. So you understand your task for tomorrow? Now we are going to do a very interesting exercise. Hmm. Okay. Listening and reading. The meaning of life. A lot of times people ask, what is the meaning of life? What is the purpose of life? What is the meaning of life? Do you sometimes wonder why are we here? Why, how we should live our life? Such questions cross people's mind, right? This subject is called philosophy that answers the question, what is life? Why are we here? Which subject answers these questions? <coughs> philosophy. In Hindi, we call it Darshan Shastra. Okay, philosophy. The meaning of life. Do you have any idea why, what is the meaning of life? I understand because it is in English. You have to speak English, right? You can only express it in Hindi, right? Yeah, I understand. Even in Hindi? Huh. Okay. The meaning of life. It's a very deep question. And there isn't one answer. Different people say different things. There is a man, his name is Kailash Satyarthi. Kailash Satyarthi. Do you know this name? Have you heard this name? I'll tell you a little bit about this. Yes, man. sir. Adi no, no. Kailash Satyarthi. Kailash Satyarthi is a Nobel Prize winner. Nobel Prize winner for peace. For peace, sir. Second. After Mother Teresa. Yes. Okay, and uh, what was his contribution? Why did he win this award? Because he dedicated his life to taking children out of bad situations. <laughs> A lot of people, ba bad people, dirty people, mean people, they use children in their factories, in their shops, and they make them work for a little bit of money. This is wrong. Children deserve to be free and go to school. They deserve to go to school. They deserve to get education. Then tomorrow, they can have a good life. But when you send small children, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 year old children to shops to work, when you send them to factories to work, when you send them to mines to work, then you are spoiling their future. You are damaging their future. And Kalas Satyarthi, he dedicated his life to this cause. Wherever he got information that children were forced to work, he managed to get them out. And for this, he won a Nobel Peace Prize. And all the money that he got from this, you know, because when you win a prize, you get a lot of money as well. He donated all the money to this cause again. He is a very normal person. He wears cheap clothes, not very expensive car he drives, okay? He's such a no normal person. All his life, he is a man in his 60s, 70s, 
and he has spent all his life trying to save children from bad circumstances. You know, some people are very bad to children. They're very rude and unkind to children. They beat their, beat, uh, their, their employees, children who work in their houses. It is bad. We should not make children work. Child labor is a crime and child labor is morally wrong. But in a small towns, in villages, people don't understand this. They think children will go to work, they will bring 100 rupees, it's good for them. They learn how to earn money. No. When they're small, they should study. They should enjoy their childhood first. Yes, you can give them training to do something in future, but don't make them work when they are small, when they're five, six, seven, eight. Child labor, he worked against child labor. So for him, this is meaning of life, saving children, right? There is, there is somebody else, we have heard her name in, the, she's very, very famous in India. Everybody knows her name. She comes on TV sometimes. You often find her on Facebook and Instagram. She wears very funny clothes, very dirty clothes. She shows her body. What's her name? And wherever she goes, media people go after her. Urfi What's Javed. Her Urfi Javed. Thank you, Anshu Beta. Urfi Javed. Her life is very different. For her, life has a very different meaning. She wears funny, funny clothes, <laughs> absolutely strange clothes. Most people don't like them, right? And she wears those clothes. She goes in front of media. So for her, life has a different meaning. For different people, life has a different meaning. So here we are going to meet two people and we will see how they see life. What is their perspective of life? What is their opinion? of life. Okay, look at the pictures and read the introduction to the story of the businessman and the fisher. Can you see the picture? There is a color picture. Oh, sorry, my dear students. Uh, I'll try to, you know, turn on the big screen for you. Oh, it will take a lot of time then. So just take a look at the picture in your book. There is a businessman. There is a fisherman. And you see a boat as well. And uh, look at the picture on the other page as well. Okay. Keep your, no, keep your book open on both sides and look at the whole picture and try to observe the picture. And read the introduction, read the introduction in the yellow. Yes, here, the introduction, read the introduction. Quietly, read the introduction quietly, everybody. Yes. There. Take a look. To page view. See, this is the businessman. How old do you think he is? 50. Ah, I think Above 50. I think he's above 50. Right. Yes, yes, you're right. And how about this guy? Um, above 30. 30. Mm. Yeah. 32, 33. He's young. The fisherman is young. The businessman is not so young. He's not so young. He's old, right? And this is his boat, fisherman's boat. And you see some fish here on his boat? Okay. And he has got a fish net here, right? And this looks like a nice, there are a lot of other boats as well here. Okay. Read the introduction. An American businessman One more. 
one morning he met a young yellow fin tuna fish fin do you understand fin yellow fin tuna fish okay i'll show you yellow fin tuna fish yellow fin okay well, i can use the you know this yellow fin tuna fish yellow fin tuna fish yellow fin tuna fish okay and okay. Yellow fin tuna fish. Yellow fin tuna fish? No. It worked. It's not working somehow. Uh -huh. For some reason, it's not working. Okay. Never mind. So, yellow fin tuna fish. Uh, okay, I'll just type it for you guys. Yellow fin tuna. Tuna is a Tuna is a tuna is a type of name fish. of fish. Yes, yes name sir. of fish. Okay, take a look at this yellow fin tuna. You can see this is called the fin. Okay, this is called the fin. Yellow fin tuna. Fin, sir. Fin. Yes, sir. Yellow fin tuna. Tunas are usually big, huh? A lot of people love tuna fish. Tuna cut. Oh. It's very nutritious. It has a lot of nutrition, guys. Yeah, very common, very popular. Yes. Um, now, what beautiful tuna, the American exclaimed. Now, answer the question. Where was the businessman, everyone? Where was the businessman? He was? He was in America. America. Where was the businessman, Vita? You read, right? You read the introduction. Was on... Where was the businessman? He was on he was fishing in the fishing yes. fishing in the, in the in south of in the south of Mexico. 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 Okay. And uh, who did he meet? He met. He met a fisherman. A young fisherman. Young, young fisherman. Um. Did you like the fish? Yes, I am. Yes, did you like the fish? Yes, he did. Eat. What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? What beautiful tuna. What did he yeah. say? What oh, beautiful it means he yeah. liked the fish. Okay. His comment was, what beautiful tuna. In, if he was a Bihari, what would he say? What beautiful tuna. What would he say? Kitna sundar tuna fish hai yaar. Na badiya tuna fish hai. Right? What beautiful tuna. Okay. What nationality were the two men? What nationality mm -hmm. were the two men? Mexican. Give me a sentence, my dear students. What nationality were the two men? They were Mexican. They gone? Fisher. Fisher. Uh, Fisher man uh, was an American. He, no, no. Uh, Businessman. The business. Business was an then American. The businessman was American. And the fisherman and was? The fisherman was an Mexican. 
Okay, work hard, dear Lala. Remember one thing. There is no way without hard work, okay? There is only one way to learn and improve with hard work. If you don't give time, you can't improve quickly. To improve quickly, everybody needs to give time to learning, okay? Now, now we are going to listen to the conversation between them. Who has started the conversation? The American businessman has started the conversation. Okay, let's listen to the conversation. Okay. Okay. Mute yourselves, everyone, and listen to the conversation carefully. Okay. Um, All right. Uh, this. And 6.11. Close your books, everyone. Close your books. Close your eyes. Tape script 6.11. The businessman and the fisherman. Close your eyes. Good morning. What beautiful tuna. How long did it take to catch them? Oh, about two hours. Only two hours? Amazing. Why didn't you fish for longer and catch more? <laughs> I didn't want to fish for longer. With this, I have enough fish for my family. But what do you do with the rest of your day? Aren't you bored? <laughs> I'm never bored. I get up late, play with my children, watch football, and take a siesta with my wife. Sometimes in the evenings I walk to the village to see my friends, play the guitar, and sing some songs. Really? That's all you do? Look, I am a very successful businessman. I went to Harvard University and I study business. Uh -huh. I can help you. Fish for four hours every day and sell the extra fish you catch. Uh, but... Uh, then you can buy a bigger boat, catch more and earn more money. But... Then I, buy a second boat, a third, and, and so on, until you have a big fleet of fishing boats. But... And you I, can export the fish and leave this village and move to Mexico City or L.A. or New York and open a fishing business. Okay, okay, okay. But how long will all this take? Don't, don't lose hope. Some people surrender easily. They think, no, no, I'm not getting it. You will understand. Pay, keep paying attention. Keep trying to understand what words they're saying, okay? Uh, let me think. Um, probably about 15 to 20 years. 15 to 20 years? And then what, senor? <laughs> Why, that's the exciting part. You can sell your business and become very rich. A millionaire. A millionaire? Really? But what do I do with all the money? Well, let me think. Um, I know. You can stop work and uh, move to a lovely old fishing village where you can sleep late, play with your grandchildren, watch football, take a siesta with your wife, mm -hmm. and walk to the village in the evenings where you can play the guitar and sing with your friends all you want. Mm. Well... Papa! Papa! Papa did, did you catch, catch many fish? <laughs> I caught enough for us today and tomorrow and also some for this gentleman. <laughs> Please, senor, have some of my beautiful fish. Goodbye, senor! Come on, children. Let's go home. Did you understand a little bit of their conversation? Who is enjoying his life better, the businessman or the fisherman? Who is happier? The fisherman. Would you like a life like that? Would you like a life like the fisherman's? Does that life, you know, attract you? Appeal to you? That lifestyle? Okay. The businessman is forcing. Yeah, he's forcing the businessman. 
he is trying to convince the fisherman that he should spend more time fishing, right? He should be, build a big business. Okay. And uh, let's look at these sentences here. Be honest with me. Don't worry, okay? You don't need to worry about anything right, wrong. That's not, not your problem. Just trust me, okay? And do what I say. Look at these sentences in exercise three. Are they true or false? Are they true or false? Just tick or cross, tick or cross them. Tick or cross them, okay? First tick. Just do it in your book, Vita. If you think it is true, the first sentence is true, tick it. If you think the first sentence is false, cross it, okay? Maybe you can you can listen to it one more time while you are checking, okay? Tape script 6.11. The businessman and the fisherman. Good morning. What beautiful tuna. How long did it take to catch them? Oh, about two hours. Only two hours? Amazing. Why didn't you fish for longer and catch more? <laughs> I didn't want to fish for longer. With this, I have enough fish for my family. But what do you do with the rest of your day? Aren't you bored? <laughs> I'm never bored. I get up late, play with my children, watch football, and take a siesta with my wife. Sometimes in the evenings I walk to the village to see my friends, play the guitar, and sing some songs. Really? That's all you do? Look, I am a very successful businessman. I went to Harvard University and I study business. Uh -huh. I can help you. Fish for four hours every day and sell the extra fish you catch. Uh, but... Uh, then you can buy a bigger boat, catch more and earn more money. But... Then uh, buy a second boat, a third, and so on, until you have a big fleet of fishing boats. But... And you uh, can export the fish and leave this village and move to Mexico City or L.A. or New York and open a fishing business. Okay, okay, okay. But how long will all this take? Uh, let me think. Um, probably about 15 to 20 years. 15 to 20 years? And then what, senor? <laughs> Why, that's the exciting part. You can sell your business and become very rich. A millionaire. A millionaire? Really? But what do I do with all the money? Well, let me think. Um, I know. You can stop work and uh, move to a lovely old fishing village where you can sleep late, play with your grandchildren, watch football, take a siesta with your wife, mm -hmm. and walk to the village in the evenings where you can play the guitar and sing with your friends all you want. Hmm. Well... <laughs> Guys, I will share this audio file with you. Your homework is to write down the conversation between the fisherman and the businessman. You will listen and write down the lines. Okay, everyone? This is your homework. Uh, the previous homework is for the day after tomorrow. The text that you are going to write about a successful person from your relatives or family that is homework for the day after tomorrow. For tomorrow, your homework is this. You have to listen and write down the audio script for this conversation. There are two people, the businessman and the fisherman. So write down what the fisherman says, write down what the businessman says. For that, you have to listen to it many times. 